Hello, everybody. So today we're going to do something really, really fun. So we are going to test ourselves some stress scripts. So I'm going to show you how to do it really carefully based on painful experience that I had uh, recently, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to run two instances of my SSH to one of the web servers. And the point is, well, I'm working in an environment where uh, the products that we serve are, need to respond to changes in servers. So I need to simulate uh, the changes in those servers in order to see the responses, right? So the changes in CPU, memory consumption, hard disk consumption, things like that. And to do so, we have a couple of tools. One of them is stress which usually already comes pre-installed on your Linux machine. But for example, to install it, to just go yum. You know what, let me let me make this session a little bit bigger here. All right, so we'll go to putty settings, we go to appearance, change the font, and we'll make it slightly bigger, yeah, like that. Okay. All right, better. Right, so you'll go yum, install uh, stress, and then minus y, right? However, stress has a limited amount of capabilities. So if you go stress health, you see that uh, basically what it has is uh, it can do a uh, well, timeout. Everybody has them, but then it's just CPU, amount of spinning workers, which you don't control. And then there, there's IO, uh, which probably simulates, I, I have no idea what it simulates actually, you need to read about that. But then memory, you can either specify how many um, multiplies of 256 you can have, or if, for example, you can specify how many megabytes or bytes or gigabytes or whatever you want to uh, occupy specifically, which is really nice. And then the hard drive also, it's kind of spins in the default of uh, gigabytes. So let's say you want to, sp to simulate that the disk space is running out really quickly, you can just you know do minus D and do it. And, and that's about it. So sounds like a lot, but actually that's, that's very limited. And uh, the point is you sometimes want to con have more control. And my issue is CPU. So uh, the point is, when I want to simulate CPU, I want it to reach a certain level, right? And I want it to remain there, because if I get to 100, the monitoring software itself wouldn't be able to interface with the server and capture what's going wrong, right? And I guess this is a case for everybody. So if you're a tester, you're a developer of some sort, or uh, I don't know, you're doing your computer science degree or something and you're trying to figure out stuff, if you go, if you max out the parameters of your memory, HDD, or CPU network, you are going to lose some of the metrics that you were about to capture. So it's really, this is really, it's really hard to capture the metrics and also get to the maximum of your performance. So you want to avoid that, and you want to be very careful with the monitoring. So to do so, we have another tool called StressNG which is like a new generation and it get updated uh, sometimes, right? So we'll go to help. And this one, this one has a lot of things. Luckily for us, all the parameters are alphabetized, right? From A to Z. So for example, VM, uh, while it has workers, which have some default value like this, right? But you can also specify uh, a VM bytes, VM hang, keep everything, all those sorts. So you now you can create graphs. Right now, you can create a scenario when you run this uh, load, and the same goes for, for example, for CPU. So if I'll scroll up all the way to the very, uh, the very up, uh, here are uh, the CPU models. Yep. So I can say CPU load, and I can specify the percentage. So for example, I'll go minus CPU amount of uh, CPU cores to occupy. So now it's going to be uh, an amount of cores, which is more uh, logical from, from this perspective. The previous stress could do it as well, but it didn't specify it properly. This one, it gets the amount of uh, cores, and by minus L, you can specify the percentage, the average percentage, more or less, which it would occupy. So it allows me to run, for example, two cores with a lot of 60, uh, 60% at a time. So how do I test it? 
I'll go to my second SSH over here and I will actually get um, the htop running. If you don't have htop, you just go yum install apple, uh, sorry, apple release, which uh, basically adds the packages, uh, the repository for uh, third party packages to your centos. And then from it, you go just yum install htop. And this is how it looks like. So right now my server has relatively uh, moderate load, uh, right? The CPU is not very busy and uh, the uh, memory is just one gigabyte out of four, or let's say like 75%, right? So now I can experiment and I like experimenting uh, separately. So I'll go, for example, with uh, stress, that's clear. That's clear. That's clear. Uh, stress and G minus um, M, right? Uh, and I'll specify how many uh, how many instances of 256 memory chunks I need to occupy, right? So it's going to be let's say uh, four. So it's going to be one gigabyte for about five minutes. Okay, 5M, five minutes, fantastic. And do what, yep, that's the typo. And then we go and the dispatching hogs for VMs. And now we see that, uh, well, it gets some of the CPU, but that's the average. Uh, we added a one gigabyte of memory to the current uh, amount, right? So that's, that's pretty nice, but uh, my software would trigger alerts and everything else when I, and go above 50, which I kind of did, but uh, I want it to be more pronounced. So I can stop it. And by the way, that's the, the point of stress. If we go to, to this, uh, oh, come on. Oh, come on. Um, function F10. Yeah, go out. So we go PS minus A uh, grab stress. Right. We have all of those stress things and uh, there there's going to be a time when I need to kill them. But for now, I can do control C and it will just stop them. But from external intervention, I cannot just click control C on an existing session. So I need to kill all of those. We will deal with that later. All right. So that was my uh, virtual memory and I'm pretty happy with the result, but probably I'm going to use six next time. Uh, that's fine. Now I'm going to do the same thing for CPU. So when I run uh, stress and G for CPU, and let's say I say occupy two cores minus T five minutes, uh, it dispatches two hogs. And from stress, uh, from sorry, from from H top, we can see that it basically occupies the whole CPU. Two of the CPUs are scheduling 100%. And uh, while it's kind of okay, while it still has memory and kind of it, it's able to, to move around, but at this point, all of the software that runs on the server would be just uh, failing, right? And uh, it wouldn't be able to function correctly, including the monitoring software that I have on it. So uh, that's just too much. I need to control it a little bit better. So what I'll do with this, I'll, for example, I'll, I'll say, well, you know what, two CPUs, because that's all I have, I think. Yeah, that's all I have. And I'll say minus L for load, and I'm going to say uh, 65%. All right, uh, I don't need to specify the percentage. Now it's dispatching the same two hogs, but with a diff with a additional uh, requirement, right? So now you see it goes and moves around 60 to 70 more or less, but average is on, on 65. And this is really nice. This is super nice for me because I can um, basically uh, control the amount of CPU. And I know for sure that the Tomcat server and the monitoring software that I'm running on this server are functioning correctly at the moment because there is enough resources left for them while I'm also overloading the system to see uh, the responses of uh, various things. Of course, if I want to fail my software and to see how resilient it is to system overload, I would go bananas, right? I would go with uh, two CPUs, I would occupy the whole memory, I would, I would just destroy the hard drive or something, but uh, I don't need to do it. Okay, so last but not least, let's simulate some uh, hard drive. Okay, so we'll go to stress 
uh, ng help and uh, let's see what it can do for us in terms of hdd and also i want to know how much hard drive i have uh, here so let's go there with minus h and the use right now is about around 36 percent 24 gigabytes uh, sorry 14 gigabytes use. so i want to go over 50 percent as well because that's where my software would be uh spinning it all right so uh to go beyond that i i if i add another 10 gigabytes is going to be 24 which is more than half you know what i want to get 30 so i'll add 12 gigabytes okay that's all i need so to simulate that, uh, where is HTD? Okay, all right, so the default is one gigabyte. I can use uh, a gigabyte, but also I can go do a minus D and the uh, amount of spinners. So I can also determine the amount of spinners also determines how fast it is, right? You cannot just fill your hard drive immediately. All right, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I notify the DOP list. Uh, stop. No, you know what? I'll go with the default. So it's going to be minus DN. And also, what? Let's see what other things we can do. So, uh, yeah. Oh, this is very, very memory copies. Those are very specific things uh, which my software, my monitor software, can capture. But I think that's not what we need. And do we have network? Right? Uh, yeah, we have also network simulation. Okay, I wouldn't risk it with network. Oh, uh, although uh, that's a realm of my colleague. I have a colleague that monitors networks and monitor infra and applications. So that's a little bit different. So stress, Russian G. And we go disk and we go 14. Okay, 14 of those, minus T, five minutes. Okay, so it's dispatching hogs, and now we'll do this. Watch uh, DF minus H. Let's see. So the use is rising. But as you see, this is not like it's done with memory or uh, with CPU, which pretty much immediate. This one takes a little while. All right, so there was 14, and I added uh, how much I added? I added 14 as well. So that should be getting to about 28 and stopping there. So the use is 74. So that's going to be my use case. So now I need to put it all together. First of all, let's see that it clears when I stop the hogs. Let's see if it clears itself. And yeah, it's pretty much immediate. So there is no damage done to your system. You don't need to clean it up, which is super nice. So now I'll just put it all together. And because I'm going to run the command remotely, I need a full path. So we'll go uh, which stress ng. And it's going to be this stress ng. And then I'm going to append all the settings that I found. So it's going to I'll start, start with CPU. Two CPUs that work at about 65%. I'll have disk that runs 14 workers that occupy uh, 14 extra gigabytes in a system, which could be an interesting thing because we also flood the system with uh, logs. So sometimes the amount of work can go overboard. So I need to be careful with that one. Maybe I need to tweak it in the future. And then the memory itself, I'm going to say uh, six, which to me means it's one and a half gigabytes extra to what it has. And the timing, I'm actually going to run it for 60 minutes. And we'll see why in a minute. Right. So the hard drive goes brr, And then we go to HTOP. And HTOP says that uh, the CPU goes brr, And the memory goes brr, And I have all of this stress running for one hour. Which is like, uh, OK, well, what's the point? The point is I want to give users control to, of when can I stop it? Uh, but the problem is when you go PS minus uh, A uh, grep stress, right? sorry, grep stress, it gets all of those nice things. 
So how do I kill them all together? Uh, well, for this, we need to use a very nice command that I have it prepared over here, right? For PID in PSEF, uh, just grab the stress, basically isolate it, right? And then kill uh, the parameter that uh, returns the PID. Okay, so I do this. I run the command and there is no stress. And we check it on the other side. It is uh, stopped running. So now I have a very, very, very nice simulation, which uh, creates a very nice load, very controlled load on my system. But I know, okay, but I can also control it. All right. Okay. And basically, uh, grab stress. Um, uh, <laughs> yep, stress, and that's about it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine. Okay, and that's what it kills when it runs the kill command. So this is why you, how you do stress. Of course, if you're an academic and you need to use all of those functionalities, you have to experiment a lot more. But if you need something fast, it's just uh, it just cannot be done uh, that precisely accurately. Uh, with the normal stress script that all Linux boxes have, because you cannot control the CPU, you just control the amount of workers, but they occupy the whole CPU for it. The IO is pretty chaotic and you cannot do network properly. And the memory is fine and the hard drive is pretty similar to what we used, but still uh, it's just not as precise as you can, as you can do it. So I hope uh, that kind of helps and sets uh, your demo work uh, or whatever you're doing. I'm a demo guy, so I assume everybody are performing demonstrations, but I hope it kind of explains the mechanism to you. I'll see you in the next video.